Okay, jumping back in time for this one, because this is a ship from the sort of mid-22nd century. So this is a Star Trek Enterprise era ship. And this is an Andorian battle cruiser. And we see quite a few of these fellows. They were a completely new ship for Enterprise. And we've seen the Andorians before. But I honestly can't remember the original series episode where we did see them at all. Um, and we've seen them sort of in the background in different places, but Enterprise really focused on them because they are often in conflict with the Vulcans and the Tellarites. And that sort of conflict actually resulted in a, re a reason why other races were prepared to start thinking about creating a federation in the first place. So the, the, one, the Andorian that we see most in Enterprise is called Shran. And he's played by um, Jeffrey Coombs. And as I was reminded of recently in a, in a Lower Decks episode where he plays an evil supercomputer <laughs> as a sort of just a box, um, he's been in shed loads of different Trek series playing a shed load of different characters. One of the more notable other ones being a Wayoon in um, Deep Space Nine. So initially I was thinking I didn't particularly want this, but then I thought, well, actually, from an, from an Enterprise perspective, actually really quite an important ship because it seems that it's pretty much the only Andorian ship we ever see, but it's, it, it is an out and out battle cruiser. It does exactly what it says on the box. It is designed to, to ward off Vulcans and um, Tellarites. And it is probably, um, you know, a ship that's really sort of dedicated to that. It's, it's definitely more advanced than Enterprise NX-01. It's got proper tractor beams rather than grappling hooks. It's got proper shields rather than just polarised hull plating. So it is by far and away a, a more sort of kick-ass ship than, than the Enterprise itself initially is in that time period. Now, for various reasons I won't go into, Shran is ends up being fairly sort of supportive of um, Earth and, and as, or the pink skins as he calls it very nicely. Um, and so as a result, we do see quite a lot of him at various points and he's strategically very, very um, helpful for us because there are times when we really do need a hand in, uh, in Enterprise because it's very early days really in Earth's, you know, sort of, exploration of the of the galaxy around them and earth is frequently outmatched by the people that it runs into so that they are of help with the zindi somewhat out of the blue because they're a hell of a long way from home but it turns out there are ulterior motives behind that particular mission so i am just casting around for my stand for this one which i seem to have managed to lose somewhere I'm only hoping it did come with that. Ah, there it is. Got it. Let's pull the see-through stands and see-through boxes. They can be difficult to see. Now, one thing I'm, uh, I am going to call them on on this one is that that is a piece of plastic. Sorry, Eagle Moss, but I, I've got to call you on that. That is a piece of plastic. Um, it's a very well done piece of plastic, but I'm somewhat surprised by that because normally their models have a lot more weight to them and for some reason they don't seem to have wanted to go down that route with this one i've no idea why um i think it flies that way up it's kind of hard to tell with this one it doesn't have very many distinguishing features but i believe it's that way around so it's, it's wings angle up mostly these are also weapon pods on, on the end of it on the end of its wings um various sort of particle cannons and all that sort of good stuff um, and they were, they were good ships. I mean, they, they were clearly sort of pretty, pretty tough ships. Although Shran's the Kumari, I believe it was called, um, does get um, taken out in the course of the series. He gets another one, but um, I think his was actually the first of this line, which were basically designed to be deterrents against the various races that they felt they were getting pressured by. I am surprised that that, that is one hundred percent plastic. Um, it's not normally the Eagle Moss way in fairness to them um, I wouldn't generally expect complete plasticness from them um, nice big uh, 
magazine with this particular version of it. So as you can see, you've got three there flying in formation. Um, if you're not familiar, that's what the Andorians look like. And that is why they, they tend to refer to, they refer to us as pink skins in a derogatory fashion because of course their skin color is not pink, it is blue. Um, unless you're a special version of them, when, then you have white skin. But that's a whole different ball game. And they've been around since the original series, as I say. Um, but obviously they got a quite a big upgrade for, for Enterprise. And, um, you know, they, they served as, well, I mean, they served as adversaries, sort of, initially. At least, you know, they, they are there to, to stir, stir up the trouble in the galaxy, basically, in, in the first instance. But they actually turned out to be pretty strong allies, actually. And Shran is really considered to be a Archer's friend by the... Um, by the end of the series, which is quite nice to see. So yeah, so it's um, I say it's slightly disappointing. I mean, it's, it's still, it's still a really detailed model. I can't, I can't knock the actual detail on the model itself. It is just surprisingly plastic for one of theirs, um, and I'm not really sure why. But um, but there you go. So that's that's that one. And um, I think oh god, I've still got two more to go. I'm gonna run out of voice. Two more to go. I'm gonna crack on. Cheers.